Hello everyone and welcome to Lush and Salty Aquariums. My name is Stefan. Thank you for coming to the channel and supporting me in this fabulous hobby. So we're updating the uh, 11, maybe 12 gallon uh, partial black water system. I uh, set it up about eight months ago. I'm not sure exactly, but that seems like the right time frame. And everything's doing uh, a okay. I have made um, some adjustments moving forward. I did a video about the UNS Atmos light screen that you see in the back. And I uh, have been playing with the colors a great deal, but I've pretty much arrived at this burnt orange, uh, burnt umber, if, if you will, uh, color, as I think it highlights uh, the black water concept. And in a weird and uh, ironic way, it provides the black water look uh, to the extent that I sort of stopped enabling that the uh, more natural way, which is by virtue of um, less plants, more botanicals, maybe adding some tannins in, in the form of the tea water itself. I do that from time to time, but I'm not vigilant. Interestingly, the botanicals I do put in, uh, they don't degrade uh, that terribly fast, which which is nice. I appreciate that. Uh, it means less mess. It means my Crypt Parva, that wonderful uh, small stemmed pseudo carpet right there, is not being uh, impeded by too much detritus or Malm. I don't mind either of those things in my systems, but I also don't mind when they're not. And generally speaking, because of the plant load that I keep and the um, filtration water change routine, all the things that I do, I tend not to have uh, problems with debris on the bottom of my aquariums. Even when I put it there myself, it seems pretty clean, right? Now I know the shrimps and the snails appreciate it and all the fish in here uh, will take what they can get from the tannins, including these uh, now jumbo neons. I bought these scrawny little, tiny little neons in a bag at a swap. Now this is, we'll show you what a bunch of live fish food and uh, good care will deliver you with this wonderful iconic fish. These are just monsters. I feed a lot of live food to all my aquarium fish, but in particular in this tank, because there's a few denizens that primarily only eat uh, live food, or as I call it, wet food. And I've talked about them. There's one there as I move the camera and you see a male licorice garami. I'm not sure the exact um, species. There's a a bunch of them they're similar the male here in this form is very dark and if we see a female it's much lighter um, that garami is a wonderful uh, little nano fish but it requires uh, low ph ideally a black water system and almost certainly wet food i've never seen my licorice garamis eat uh, dry food Although I do put bug bites and things like that in here, and it's very possible they do pick at that as well. In the back here, I think we see a Pygmy Coriodora as well as a Morse Code Tetra. It's in silhouette, so you don't get the wonderful uh, color patterns that the Morse Code Tetra delivers, but you see them in silhouette. Now they're in the fabulous tangle coming from this pothos up here. And while the pothos on the top is showing some leaf burn from the Chihiro's light, um, even though I missed it and all that, it's doing just fine uh, big picture because you can see these wonderful white roots are already deep down now and some into the substrate. So it's getting nutrients from both the water column as well as the substrate and it's uh, photosynthesizing in the air as it is a air plant pothos. It is 
this is the variegated white and green, which I always get uh, more leaf burn with that one than let's say this fabulous version here, which is growing on my little five gallon system. Look at how robust that is. The irony is the roots are not as spectacular. So go figure. That's the marvelous and curious thing about this hobby. Uh, just when you think you know everything, you don't know anything. That's Anubius right here, Petite and Bartari. This one has probably come loose from its mooring. You see the little pygmy Coriodoras. When they uh, frolic down there, they might uh, uproot the Nanubius, but it's not problematic for the plant. I mean, it's more just minor league annoyance because it could disrupt your aquascape. I've got this nice flow of Anubius between the uh, petrified wood. I chose petrified wood because, well, A, it looks really cool, you know, ancient, but also it's an inert rock, so it won't increase the pH. This is a dwarf uh, tiger lotus, the green strain. While it has a little bit of red modeling or brown or red, this is the green variety. I have red in my other tanks, as I know some of you do as well. But in here, for whatever reason, I have green. And it's doing what I want it to do, which is taking up uh, just the left-hand corner as opposed to dominating the whole aquascape. So one of the changes I had to do, and I didn't want to do it, I put a little hang on back here. It sweetly uh, sits right there on the side. It's a Mignon, M-I-G-N-O-N. It's the brand I would recommend you get because I've had no problems with it. It has a clean look, a good price, and clearly it's a Chinese, you know, contraption. Uh, and there's two sizes, small and really small. A hundred and a sixty, I think, is the brand or the, you know, the code they put on it. And I had to put this on here because my canister was failing. I love the little miniature steel canister I got from uh, Landon. The problem is sitting parallel with the fish tank as it was right there where those two uh, river rocks are, it wasn't functioning properly. The, the necessary gravity that would pull the water up and you know pull it down so that it can go up the motor just wasn't sufficient to drive it without the gravitational force. Uh, that was the best expl explanation I could come up with. And it was supported by uh, what I interpreted in the literature is you need to put the canister beneath the inflow or outflow. I mean, there was some disclaimer, but it had worked for six months just fine. But then when I did a cleaning of it, I just, I spent hours and I couldn't get it to work. And I even um, shortened the hoses. I did everything I could to make that motor, but it didn't happen. So I, I went back to my default, which is kind of where I started in this hobby with nano tanks, these little hang on backs. And because this aquarium is now established uh, I didn't think I'd have a problem with a much, much uh, smaller bio load. I mean, I use biomedia and a little bit of floss in here. And um, I can pull the floss out every few days and just put another clump of it in there. And then the biomedia, which is a fraction of the amount that I used to have, uh, in theory, with a black water system with low pH, uh, biological media, the lower the pH, the less relevant it is. So for whatever, it's been about a week now and I'm not noticing any uh, negative or adverse effects from switching. Uh, the positive effects are that uh, this is a no brainer to clean. Obviously it doesn't look as sweet sitting there on the side of the tank versus the stainless steel canister. But for now, that's my solution. And, uh, you know, I try to marry equipment with my aquascaping and my aquariums and my fish room so that while I'm looking at it, 
it gives me satisfaction as opposed to frustrating me. Um, it seems like an understatement, but if the equipment was rattling and dirty and all over the place and leaky, you know, that would be problem, problem, problem. But because it's nice and tidy and doing exactly what I want it to do and um, the plugs are uh, conveniently located, you know, all the things I do to make equipment uh, unobtrusive, although it will always be obtrusive, uh, I'm okay. I'm okay with it. I'm, I'm not mad at Landon per se. I, I'm bummed. Uh, I didn't do anything wrong. That filter, that canister should work. I was thinking about trying the new UNS Blitz mini canisters. They do the same thing and I love the UNS brand. I wish they would hit me up. It would be like a, a celebrity endorsement for me. I'd be so thrilled if they asked me to work with them. Um, that won't happen, but I continue to use their products and I'm very enthusiastic. And they uh, came up with two small canister filters, stainless steel, beautiful, comes with lily pipes. I was thinking about getting that, but you know, those are not cheap. And I'm just gonna ride with the little hang on back for now and see what happens. I, if the tank were to go in a bad direction, I would make a change, but so far so good. If anything, by uh, being able to address the floss on a, you know, every other day, cause it's so easy and it gets so dirty. I'm getting very clear water. Um, the tannin will stay in, um, but the particulates from degrading um, botanicals will get caught in the floss. And I guess that's a good thing, right? You know, when I had the canister and it was working, it got so clogged with little, you know, millions of little bits of leaves and twigs, you know, thicker stuff. And that would affect the ability of it to uh, take in and put out water quickly. You know, within a week or two, it would be suffering. And here, if I have that problem, and I will, it's really easy to address it. You just take that top off. You don't even have to turn the filter off and you just make your little adjustment. It could be less than a minute. And those of you who know, know. Um, I don't have any big hang on backs. I haven't had a big hang on back filter in a long time. Uh, one of the problems is if I put it back there, it becomes instantly harder to service or maintenance because it's behind my rack here and that's a wall. There's a lot of cords back there uh, and it's just precarious to be stooped over and trying to address anything in the back. And now I've obviously allowed plenty of room and I do do it. I do it regularly and it's not a big problem, but it, everything you can do to mitigate um, maintenance hassles in terms of the convenience or lack of ease in your ability to do it is a way to manage uh, one's fish room. Not just how many tanks can I fit, but how can I fit them so I can work on them in relative ease. And I say relative because there is a shelf here and there is a limited amount of space. And uh, so it's a give and take. And you work with your equipment and your hardscape and necessary stuff like support beams and wires and cords. We all play that balancing act. And if, if you're like me, your eye just gets comfortable with seeing things if they're doing their job and they're not causing any disruption, then just seeing them isn't that much of a problem. Obviously the heater is hidden and it has been forever and you know, we do what we can, like I said. Does anyone have any questions about this uh, wonderful little tank or some of its inhabitants? I believe I touched on all of them. The neons, 
the Morse code Tetras. There's a school of them back there. The Pygmy Corydoras. I have some Neocaridina and a Amano shrimps. There's an Amano right there. Ram's horn snails. I talked about the plants. As always, everybody, I appreciate you. Keep your hands in the tank and ciao for now.